Hey, what's going on? This is Andrew, and today we're going to be continuing this new Connect project. And today we're going to be mapping out the depth by taking the depth of the Connect and writing it to a texture. We kind of started it on the last video, so hopefully we can finish it in this one. What we're going to be first doing in our scene is we're going to be creating a new raw image to output that depth. So if we go to our viewer here, we're just going to duplicate this raw image. And we're going to call that raw depth. And we're going to be editing both our measure depth script as well as our viewer here. So let's go ahead and edit our viewer so we can create a reference for this depth. So just like this, we're going to create another raw image variable. And we'll just call this raw depth. And we're going to be setting that texture right after this one. We're going to need to create a function to get the to get the image from our from our measure depth that we just created so we'll actually I think we'll create a, a reference to that as well we'll still need to create the actual texture and then a way to get that texture I believe let's actually look at it really quick see if we created it in the last video I don't think we did so let's not worry about that so let's go ahead and we'll comment it out once we're done with it but we'll do mraw depth dot texture is going to equal our m measure depth and then whatever texture or getter we end up setting. So let's go ahead and comment that out. Allow it to do add thingy. It's a great comment, right? Okay, so let's go to our measure depth, and this is where we were getting some of our our information, our camera space points, as well as our color space points. And we're going to be essentially lay, laying them on top of one another. And sort of the general idea of what we're going to be doing today is that we're going to be using a simple debug method where every time we hit the space bar, we're going to be creating a new texture. Now, we're not going to be doing creating a new texture every frame because it's certainly a lot of information for the connect as well as your computer to, to create. So this is sort of like an easy, an easy in between. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to create an update function. Not an, on anima, animator IK. Oh my goodness. That's, that's what happens when you type very early in the morning. So our update. And then we're going to create another private function that's going to do our, we're going to call it depth to color. There we go. And, and then we're going to do if our input dot get key down is our key code dot space, we're going to call our depth to color. There we go. And our depth to color is where we're going to be using all the stuff that we kind of set up here, including our, our mapper as well as our color space points and all that stuff. And we are going to need to add on to these this array a little bit. So we're going to need to going to be adding a new array that we're going to be a view short. And if you remember in the last video, this is um, this is what the multi-source manager outputs the depth data as. So that's where we're going to be storing our depth data that we're going to be getting. And we're just going to be calling it depth data equals null. Okay. Cool. So let's go ahead and go down to this, this depth to color. And all this function is really doing is, like I said before, it's taking uh, the camera space points or the color space points and set it and lining them up, essentially. And as we sort of write it out, I'll explain it a little bit more step by step. So don't worry about it too much right now. So the first thing that we're going to do is we're going to be setting our depth data. And we're going to do that by using our nifty multi-source that we have from the from that connect script we got, which is this guy right here. And then we're going to want to map that data. So let's call this get data. And this depth data is basically just a stream of data. It's a stream of pieces of information that's going to help us map both the RGB color space of our of that our connect is producing as well as the camera space to reiterate the color space is going to be the 2d texture while the camera space is going to contain all of those 3d points basically 
But what we're going to need to do is use the depth data to sort of line those two things up. And that's where our mapper comes into play. So before we forget, let's go ahead and add a little comment here. It's called get depth. It's not particularly helpful, but it may be for just trying to look at the significant steps in the process. So we're going to be getting our mapper and we're going to be using our map, mapping our depth frame to our camera space first, really doesn't matter. Where we're going to be passing in two things here. We're going to be passing in an, a, a U short array, which is going to be our depth data that we're getting up right above this. And then we're going to be passing in our M camera space points. And that is the array that we created earlier that's going to be sitting up here in a week. And this really much behaves like an out where it's going to call this function, pass in this data, and it's going to basically fill up this array here, even though it doesn't use the word out or something like that, or a reference, or it may look, um, if you've ever used, you know, array cast and using the keyword out, but in this case it doesn't, but it still sets this variable here. If you found that confusing, <laughs> if not, then oh well. So then we're going to be mapping our depth frame to our color space. So we're going to be using our M depth data and we'll be giving it our array of color space points. Okay, cool. And that's pretty much it for now. In the future, we're going to be doing a lot of filtering here for essentially figuring out what we want the active play space to be. And then once we've uh, got the mapper, we've set both of our arrays here, we're going to want to actually create our texture. So we're going to make a new function. It's going to be private void create texture. And this is going to be pretty simple. All we're going to be using is our, our color space points here, and we're going to be just creating a new texture, which is going to be pretty simple. So when you create a texture, naturally the first thing you're going to need is a texture, but we're also going to want to return one. So let's go ahead and do a texture 2D. And then let's go ahead and create that texture. And we'll be just calling it new texture. And the connects RGB camera outputs an image of 1920 by 1080. So we're just going to want to create a texture that basically lines up with that perfectly. So let's go ahead and create a new texture. It's going to be 1920 by 1080 and we're going to set its texture format to alpha 8 and this enables it so it can be transparent so we can see what the camera is seeing behind it and we can also let's just see if it's if it's uh being lined up correctly so then what we're going to do is we're going to create a couple of for loops so we're going to have one where it's int x equals zero x is going to be less than 1920 and x Gonna add to x and then we're going to create one for y and let's just go ahead and copy that boy okay and then we'll want to change the height to 1080 so what we're doing here is that what i'm going to do first is we're going to set all of the pixels on our texture to clear now i think it's usually set to white or i'm not 100 percent sure maybe i should have checked that but it's all right we're just going to make sure that all of this, all of the text, all of the pixels in our texture are going to be clear and have an alpha of zero. So the whole image is going to be transparent. And the only thing you're going to see are the pixels that we're going to be setting using our color space points. So then we're going to use it for each loop. And we're going to call color space point. in M space. We're going to go through all of the points in our color space points array. It's a bit long. Let's just call this point for the time being. And within our new texture, we're going to be calling set pixel. And we're going to call point dot color space. Well, actually, nope, just point. <laughs> and we have our X and our Y values. So we have point X and point Y. And we're going to be setting the color to black. But since it's in, we set our texture format to alpha 8, it's not necessarily going to support color, I believe. So it's only going to be grayscale. So this doesn't necessarily matter. I think it's going to be black either way. But what we're going to have to do with our point X and our point Y is we're going to have to cast those to integers, just like that. 
Okay, cool. And then once all that's done, we're going to want to return our new texture. Da -da -da. Wonderful. Okay. So now we're going to do a really simple way that our image viewer is going to be able to get access to this texture. So let's just make it public. So we'll make a public texture 2D and we'll just call this depth texture considering we have, we're calling it depth data and depth to color just kind of makes sense whether it's necessarily right or not. But so now that we were mapping our depth to our color, a color being our color space as well as our camera space, we're going to now use that information to create a texture right here. So we're also going to be setting our depth texture. So our depth texture is going to equal create texture. All right, there we go. So let's scroll through here. Make sure that's everything. I think it is. Just to get this up and running. So let's go ahead and go back into Unity and let's go ahead and set our our depth image as well as our measure depth, which we haven't put in yet. So let's go ahead and make a prefab for that. Let's create empty. Oh my goodness, it did the exact same thing last time. It just likes to child itself to everything. Um, so let's just call that measure depth. We'll apply our changes to that. We'll throw our measure depth on that. And it's gonna output a texture there. And I believe once we run it, we're gonna see it there so you can see it. Um, and I think, let's double check these guys. No, that looks pretty good. I don't think I'm gonna have to, I'm not sure if I have to put a special material on that, but let's just see. And it's gonna be white because we actually still have this texture on top of it. So if we go ahead and hit space, ooh, I don't know if it did anything. Oh, we forgot to, oh, I know. We made that common and we forgot. Right, let's go back to our, let's go back to our image viewer. And we need to, we need to add the thingy, right? So we have our texture and we're just going to be calling it getting our m measure depth dot m depth texture. There we go. Oh, it's not a, not a, not a function. It's just a variable. There we go. Cool. So let's go back and go into unity and let's test that out again. And our image viewer, I think we may have lost one of our reference. Yes, we do. I have to set that up. Oh my goodness. See, this is what happens when you program early in the morning, you forget things. <laughs> okay, I think, I think we're all good to go. Let's go ahead and try that again. And let's hit spacebar. And it's literally all black. <laughs> all right, let's see what we screwed up. All right, so let's look at our depth image really quick. And I think when I duplicated it, I kept that material on it. So let's go ahead and delete that. We're not gonna need that, I believe. And let's actually go back and look at our measure depth script. And I think it's happening right here in this create texture. So we're setting the pixels to clear and then we're, then we're setting the black ones. But what I think, I, oh, actually, I think I, I always forget this. It's the new texture. And we have to apply all the changes we've made naturally. Or once we apply all these things, it's not going to show up. Imagine that. So let's try that again. And let's go ahead and hit spacebar. And there we go. There's our depth data. And it's sort of, I never knew what this was here at the top, but it's not necessarily a big deal. And what we're going to be doing in the future is we're going to be essentially cutting back the left, the right, the top, and the bottom so we can restrict it just to this poster board space. And let's see if I can put something in front of it. Oh, I can't hit space at the same time. So I'm going to make a really quick change and then I'll show it to you. Well, you can actually also see that's flipped there. So I totally did forgot about that. And I didn't mention that in the last video, but you can sort of see the displacement that's occurring. One thing that also is kind of happening here is that 
when we're going to be mapping some of our our viewport space or what is going to be like our, our the camera pixel the pixel width and the pixel height of the camera within our scene with the essentially the screen coordinates we're going to have to work out some of that as well but let's go ahead and let's flip that and let's try that again and I don't recommend creating a texture like that, but it's just, you know, this is super early debug, so it's not that big of a deal. But it really, if you don't have a strong system, it's not gonna work very well. Um, so I think, let's go ahead and make another material. And we'll just call this depth. And I believe, we can keep, well, we can maybe keep an unlit. Let's, let's do a transparent and see if, what that does. All right, so let's try that again. All right, and there we go, cool. So let's try this. All right, as you can see, it's really slow. I'm also yelling across the room. This is a, this is a water bottle, if you didn't notice that. And, and this is a yoga mat, in case you didn't notice. <laughs> All right, cool. So that seems to be working. I think that's a good start. All right. Okay, so that that was a that was a bit rough. That was a bit rough second video, but I think I think we're in good shape. Um, I'm not sure what we're gonna be doing in the next one though. I think we could either start to filter some of the points like I said previously, or no, I think that's it. For one, we're gonna be creating a custom class for one. So we can sort of match up some of our depth data as well as our color stuff. So it's all in one easy thing when we're gonna be creating our play space here on the poster board. So hopefully you managed to follow this. If you have any questions, you're obviously more than welcome to leave them in the description below. And you know, if you just wanna say hi, you can do that too. If you like the video, feel free to leave a like and hopefully I'll see you in the next one.